This is on page one, Astronomy and Masonry. I'm just going to read the entire thing to you. So, 1 Corinthians 24, 41. One glory of the sun and another glory of the moon and another glory of the stars. For star differeth from star in glory. Ecclesiastes uh, 12, 12. Of making many books no end and much reading a weariness of the flesh. <clears throat> there are two distinct sciences of masonry, the speculative or theoretical and the operative or practical, the former being a mental knowledge, the latter merely a parrot-taught formula. There are likewise two distinct sciences of astronomy, the theoretical and the practical, the theoretical being a mental study interpreting the celestially written mysteries of the ancients of the earth, the latter a mechanical operation looking through a long tube and dotting arithmetical truths on paper. That's pretty funny how he puts that. Operative masons are led to believe that their order in ancient ages consisted of workmen with aprons, mallets, compasses, and squares, and their intellectual occupation was in chipping stones and spreading mortar. These operative laborers nevertheless fondly cherish the belief that somehow or other, by divine right, they are descendants of those biblical men that were employed in building the Temple of Solomon. But, as will be speedily shown, masons of this age and their predecessors had nothing whatever to do with any Solomon or any temple. It was the intellectual theoretical masons that from time immemorial erected the splendid edifice yearly dedicated to Solomon. It's continuing on. Um, These intellectual masons built the dwelling of the sun, using wrought stones made ready for the building, and when occupied in their work there was not heard any sound of hammer or axe, or any tool of iron. The gems of heaven were the precious stones wherewith the temple was erected. These gems or stones of heaven were known by speculative, ma speculative masons as rocks, the polar star being the rock of ages. This is really important part. Trust ye in the Lord forever, for the Lord Jehovah is the rock of ages. This polar star is the rock or Mount Olympus of the Latins, and was so high that no bird could fly to the top, nor were clouds ever seen upon its summit. This polar star is the Mount Meru of the Buddhists, and the Mount Zion of the Hebrews. In quotes, They that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be removed, but standeth fast forever. End quote. David says, Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. From our world, nothing can be higher than the polar star. It is the pivot or point or axis on which the earth performs its diurnal and annular motion. All the other visible brilliance, brilliance of heaven appear to us as moving in circles of greater or lesser magnitude, but the polar star standeth fast forever. David exclaims, Hear me, my brethren, I had in my heart to build an house of rest, and for the footstool of our God. And thus saith the Lord, the heaven my throne, and the earth my footstool, where the house ye build unto me, and where the place of my rest. Solomon, at the dedication of the temple, temple says, Will God indeed dwell on the earth? Behold, the heaven and heaven of... Let me reread that. Will God indeed dwell on the earth? Behold, the heaven and heaven of heavens cannot <clears throat> contain thee. How much less this house that I have builded? Cephas or Cepheus means rock. Cepheus is seated in the highest heaven, and he has Mount Olympus, or the polar star, for his footstool. Nothing can be more perplexing or mysterious to the uninitiated than the figurations on the celestial globes and atlases. The various divisions and subdivisions of unnatural objects constituting pictured heaven plainly indicate that mystery or mysteries of some kind were intended, and the concealments of some important truths the object desired. If the hidden or lost mysteries of intellectual masonry do not relate to the heavens, to what can they relate? The pictured heaven with its various constellations is, is with trifling variations the same as that depicted before the period set down for the birth of the Savior. What mean these pictured heavenly figures? Why from generation to generation have they been so religiously preserved? On looking at a celestial chart, we see the picture of a perfect ram called Aries, but when pointed out among the stars, it resembles a kangaroo as much as a ram. In fact, the stars do not portray any figures or semblance of terrestrial objects. The next in order to the ram is the picture of a half bull. But why the whole ram and the half bull? Then look at the sign 
Capricornus, half a goat, the other half a fabulous fish. Then there is Cetus with a tail like Capricornus. In the Cetus, our whale has a trunk or proboscis and is two feet dabbling in the rivers Eridanus and Ginnon.